try this this morning. If you did it on the fabric, you know. something important happened yesterday. I'm still trying to sort out what happened. Can I tell you my story? I'd heard of a man named Jesus, son of Joseph, who was from Nazareth. People had said he was a great teacher. Imagine my excitement when I heard he was passing through our town on his way to Jerusalem. And on the Sabbath, our most holy day, I invited him to read, read scripture and teach. When everyone was gathered at the synagogue, I leaned forward with the other men to hear the scripture he'd chosen and his interpretation afterward. Suddenly, his attention seemed distracted. He appeared to be watching the women behind the screen. You know, we allow women to hear the teaching as long as they remain mostly out of sight and do not bother the men who are there for the important business of learning. And I heard him call out a name, Rachel. I didn't know whom he was calling, but I thought I could see a reaction from the women behind the screen who seemed to be separating themselves from a woman at the front who was leaning her head against it. I thought that he might tell her that the screen should not be touched. Then he called her again. Rachel, come here. His interest in this woman was becoming tiresome. Two women that helped her to walk around the screen. They disregarded the basic divider between men and women in the synagogue. The woman in the middle moved stiffly. At least all three were looking down in humility as befits a woman. The two women brought her to Jesus, looked at him briefly, then backed away. Then he did something I was astounded to see. He put his hand under Rachel's chin and told her to look at him. She answered, Sir, I'm unable to do that. Then he paused and seemed to look penetratingly at everyone in the crowd. He placed his hands on her shoulders and looking at the top of her head said in a calm voice, Woman, you are set free from your illness. And all of a sudden she straightened up, thanked him profusely with tears and raising her hands over her head. She looked toward heaven and praised God loudly. First, like everyone else, I was astounded. Then, I can tell you, I was furious. I had been told that Jesus was a man of God, but how could he be? To call a woman out from behind the woman's screen was indecent, and then to heal her on the Sabbath. I remember thinking that he must have picked up some of the ways of the Gentiles. As the leader of my synagogue, it seemed essential to distance myself from this Jesus and from his law-breaking actions. By this time, the crowd was in an uproar. The men were pelting me with questions, and the group of women behind the screen moved with excitement. I kept remembering Moses' commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. By now, it seemed that some of the people were clamoring to be healed themselves. This was turning into a free-for-all. In an attempt to restore decency and order, I raised my voice and told the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. I was also thinking that if Jesus wanted to cure women, he should do it in the privacy of their homes and not in public. But Jesus had the last word. He looked me right in the eye and called me a hypocrite. He said to me and to those men who were agreeing with me, 
Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And shouldn't this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? Well, several things went through my mind when he chastised me. First I thought, our rabbi had determined that leading animals to water on the Sabbath day could not legally be construed as work, because they're unable to get there on their own and because they need water to stay alive. How could that be compared to voluntarily committing the work of healing on the Sabbath? Would the woman die without it? Maybe she would, I realized. But what about Jesus calling her a daughter of Abraham? That just isn't done. With all Jews, she's one of the sons of Abraham. Sometimes we call ourselves children of Abraham. But daughter of Abraham? Everyone knows. The sign of circumcision, the sign in the flesh making someone a Jew, applies to males only. And genealogy is always traced back through the males in the family. Then it occurred to me, that Jesus somehow knew that this woman had been ill for 18 years. How did he know that? Did someone come to him and ask him to heal her? Yes, that will remain part of the mystery, as well the mystery of where he gets his power to heal. I can tell you one thing, though. I won't stop thinking about this incident. Although it was a seriously disruptive event, I continue to be puzzled by this man, Jesus. Who is he? Why did he do what he did? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who's made us holy through his commandments and has taken pleasure in us. I was healed yesterday through a servant of God, a man named Jesus. Let me back up and tell the events in order. My name is Rachel, and I awoke early yesterday morning, Sabbath morning, as I have for many years. I live alone and receive a few coins each day as I beg outside the city wall. I have no family and my husband divorced me shortly after my illness began 18 years ago. It began with a strange stiffness in my lower back and eventually my whole back and then my neck were stiff. My head became permanently bent down onto my chest. I began to look forward to going to the synagogue on the Sabbath for two reasons. To hear the words of scripture read and the teaching about them. Also, to get there early enough to rest my head against the screen and obtain a little relief. Yesterday, I didn't get there as early as I usually do, but some friends made room for me and I found myself behind the screen. I rested my head upon it. Then the most amazing thing happened. I heard a man call my name. Then he told me to come to him. At first I felt all the women move away from me. Then two friends came and took my arms. I couldn't tell where we were going, except that it was beyond the screen where I'd never been before. Soon we stopped in front of a pair of feet. They looked like men's feet. I saw a hand touch me under my chin heard the man asking me to look at him. Sir, I said, I'm unable to do that. He paused, then I felt his hands on my shoulders. Woman, he said to me, you are set free from your illness. Immediately, I felt the stiffness fall away. I could raise my head. The first thing I saw was his smiling face. Then it blurred through my tears. I took his hand and kissed it. And I raised my arms high and looking toward him, praise God for healing his servant and for the compassion shown me by this wonderful man of God. Then there was an uproar. I had never heard such noise in the synagogue before. Some were praising God as I was, and others seemed to be arguing. The synagogue leader spoke out and said that mm, I should not have been healed because it was the Sabbath day. Jesus. I later found out his name, responded by saying that those who were arguing were hypocrites because they took care of their animals' need for water on the Sabbath. And he said something I'll never forget. 
and shouldn't this woman, a daughter of Abraham, he said, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. What a priceless gift. He saw me, really saw who I was. He knew my history, and he called me a daughter of Abraham, a female person of value in my own right, and at least as valuable as an animal. I will always hear his voice call me daughter of Abraham, and I will feel my heart brim with love that needs to be shared with others. Praise be to God. She's traditionally called the bent over woman. I took the liberty of giving her a name, but in the story she has no name. Her story is striking for a few reasons. Not only is she healed on the Sabbath, as are others in the Gospels, but she's removed from the women's area and taken to the area exclusively reserved for men. She's given a name, Daughter of Abraham. This name is not used anywhere else in the New Testament. It has the effect of affirming her femaleness and making her a direct heir of the promise to Abraham. And finally, this is one of the few instances where a person doesn't ask to be healed. Jesus took the initiative. Jesus saw her, and seeing her had compassion for her. The woman possibly had a disease we now call ankylosing spondylitis. Vertebrae begin fusing in the lower spine, and as the disease progresses, the disability may creep up the spine until it may cause the head to be bent forward on the chest. It may even cause stiffness in the jaw, which may make it difficult to eat. Whether a victim of that disease or of a more common disease like osteoporosis, she had also been disabled by circumstances, living in that time and culture. If she had no husband or son to care for her, she likely lived alone with a meager income. She may have been aware of who Jesus was, but she didn't approach him and ask him for healing. She may have been told, you're ugly, often enough that she began to believe it. Or she may have been told that her disability was punishment for her or her parents' sins. What the woman had seen for most of 18 years was the ground. Jesus helped her to stand upright, and healing her illness, he also corrected her vision. Like the bent-over woman, many of us have been injured psychologically. Maybe we've been abused by parents who told us, you'll never amount to anything, or you're selfish, or we've been told by people who matter to us that we are sinners because we are divorced and remarried maybe because we're gay. Or we've been told, as a friend of mine was, that he would be healed of his rheumatoid arthritis when he had enough faith. Or like my sister, you may have been told by a close friend that you belong to the wrong church and won't be saved. Some people have been abused by intimate partners who say, who would love you? You can't do anything with and then further abused by pastors who say that the abusive one will be healed through prayer if there is enough faith. Some of us have even been abused by representatives of the church who have told us that in some way we are wrong and can't serve the church. In these circumstances, we run the risk of becoming psychologically bent over, unable to look into Jesus' eyes. Or maybe we become bent over like the leader of the synagogue who was unable to see the woman and saw only the work. A work performed on the Sabbath when work was not to be performed. It's possible to grow bent over gradually through unhappiness so that we see only the negative, even in happy events. The unhappiness predisposes us to be critical of other people. Do you think the vision of the synagogue leader was also corrected? It's difficult to say. We're told that all Jesus' opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Whether the leader actually felt ashamed of his words and reaction, though, we don't know. 
I can imagine Jesus reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, about the Sabbath. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord. Problem is, when we think we're honoring and preserving something, even the Sabbath, it's so easy to become rigid about our ideas. The Sabbath became for the synagogue leader a day of compulsion, and in this case, unwelcome surprise. Add to that the heavy responsibility he must have felt at being the leader of the synagogue. Maybe he wasn't so much a bad man as he was short-sighted in feeling the weight of his role, <coughs> needing his own vision corrected. Jesus has always acted out of love. The woman was in physical and psychological pain now and needed to be healed. As always, Jesus showed compassion to have the highest ethical value, higher even than honoring the Sabbath. His actions said to the woman then, as he says to us today, I want healing and wholeness for you and for all people. You are my dear child, whom I've always loved, a daughter or a son of the promise made to Abraham and his descendants. Look upon my face and know my love. Then I ask you to look with my eyes at others. Thank you.